Hello everyone, welcome back to Ray's Aerospace and Kerbal Space Program 2, where I'm going to test re-entry with the space shuttle and see what location we should retroburn at in order to make sure that we get safely back to the KSC. Now, before I do that, I wanted to do something I have resisted doing so far, which is turn on anti-aliasing. We can see from this test craft in the screen that it could do with some anti-aliasing. And so let's turn it on. The reason I've resisted is because of past experiences with anti-aliasing that it could cause extra lag. And I'm just going to go with 4x for now. We will go with that and see if that makes a performance difference. You can look at my previous videos uh, to judge as well. And we are going to proceed. This is the one with the shuttle currently loaded. By the way, uh, the first one I, the first video I did was bringing Jeb to Duna and we failed. However, the game did not save the state where Jeb had perished. Jeb is still quite alive in this save and we can retest what happens if, say, we try to get rid of the a stage that we were supposed to decouple by deleting it or something like that. If you have some other method to solve that problem, we may be able to still save Jeb. But anyway, let's focus on the shuttle this time. So I'm actually going to deorbit with the tanks so that we deorbit the tanks as well. And in the previous video, I lied just a little bit. I don't generally care about circular orbits when launching. However, I very much care about circular orbits when re-entering. And that is because they allow the re-entry to be predictable. And so we are going to circularize this orbit at about 100 kilometers in order to make sure that when we do re-entry, uh, we can make it predictable. I was somewhat bad when designing it though. I didn't look at the center of mass and center of lift. I just put the wings where the wings ought to be. And that might come back to bite me. I think we just point directly at prograde. I think they uh, these nozzles are cantered out, but not cantered up. So... Okay, I, I'm still trying to use my joystick. Half the time I'm trying to use my joystick to control the craft. And actually, W and S are sort of reversed as far as pitch is concerned compared to what I'm used to. I, I usually have W S down, but anyway. Uh, let us proceed. I haven't, of course, fixed the control surfaces on here. We're gonna do some fixing. It operated well, but not perfectly. Uh, okay, 101 by 99. I'll take it. Okay, so, now we have to get back to that smudge there. <laughs> not the best in iconery, is it? Uh, actually, that's a little bit south of our orbit, but that we can turn. We have cross range. We can uh, turn towards that at the end. Uh, okay, I, I guess it is the first time I've been in map view for the, in this save. I don't know. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to go with angles, and we're going to deorbit at 135 here. But before I even think about that, the one time that I like to quick save. I guess it, I pressed F5, but let's just save game. Save game. Um, uh, Re-entry test. The one time I basically allow myself to do quick saves is when I'm doing re-entries. Re-entry testing. So, okay. So that way we'll be able to reload it. So at 135, we will create a maneuver. I don't usually create a maneuver for this, but let's just go with it. Um, I don't know about the maneuver node. I'm going to keep it at retrograde regardless of the maneuver node. For consistency's sake. Two, one, and go. I'm not too sure I like the whole space engines don't make sound thing. If you're inside the space shuttle, they will make sound because, you know, it shakes things and vibrations create sound. In fact, the shuttle's RCS system was compared to howitzers. <laughs> it was very loud. The OMS engines might have been quieter. It was the nose RCS, I think, that was probably pretty loud. Now we have more fuel than I was intending to come down with. And I want to get to 30 kilometers regardless of this burn. Okay, that's 30 kilometers and 101 apoapsis. Okay. 
I should have put like an empty mop propellant tank so that we could drain some of the mop propellant from these tanks into it. So just to review how the resource transfer works because people had some questions about that. I must admit it's not the best dialogue. I select like with this arrow and then it's basically like as if you right clicked the tanks in the old system in KSP-1. So once you've right clicked the tanks, okay, uh, then you can select which ones are pumping out and which ones are pumping in and then start. The equal, I guess, will balance all of them. So, yep, that's basically how that works. But you're wiggling a lot. Okay, let's get rid of this. Um, how do we decouple? Can we not decouple this? Well, shucks. Well, I guess we're carrying the payload back down. I did not think about that. I expected to be able to separate off the payload. I guess we gotta be testing how well it does with 27 tons coming back down. Maybe if I turn docking acquiring force to zero? No, it doesn't let go of those tanks. So that doesn't work the way it did in KSV-1. Which, I mean, in, in a way we're trying to use a uh, docking port to substitute for a decoupler. And so maybe they just didn't want that kind of part substitution to be possible. But yeah, that's unexpected though. Alright, so keep that in mind. Your docking ports might not be able to separate from things if they're pre-coupled. I haven't tried docking yet, so I don't know if the docking ports work at all. But uh, yeah, we should do that possibly next. Alright, let's close this up then. So the shell re-entered at an angle of 40 degrees. So that's what we're going for here. And for consistency, we're not going to do S-turns, because we're trying to measure how it's going to be. Just doing a normal re-entry. We may or may not be able to hold 40 degrees depending on where the center mass and center lift are. They have to be pretty close to each other in order to keep the balance. And we don't have RCS holding it, it's just the reaction wheel in the Mark III cockpit. Map view, we are currently here, and the KSC is currently there, so we're about um, uh, 50 degrees away from it. But we are coming down a lot heavier than I would normally expect to. I don't land planes with keyboard, so <laughs> this is, hmm, it's going to be very frustrating for me, I'm sure. So far, so good, though. Our impact point is coming in. It's basically double the length of the KSC, so... And it's coming in okay. Our speed is still pretty high at this point. I'll just go to surface speed at this point, too. I don't know why there's so much space in the staging for the stage, but... Okay. <laughs> Whoa, okay, no, I don't need it taking more space. That's a glitch, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, we're obviously north, and we're looking good overall. We'll probably go past a bit and then come around. So, uh, it's all down to my landing skills with keyboard. Oh, oh, it's being forced down. I can't hold the nose up. Okay, well, uh, if I hold down the W key, I can get this much. At a certain point we have to pitch down, but not just yet, I don't think. Oh, oh, it's rolling. Oh, gosh. No, no. Okay, uh, we have to pitch down. <laughs> that, that, that sort of uh, yaw deviation or roll deviation is a good sign that you're stalling. So, just pitch down. Have I mentioned that I hate controlling aircraft with keyboard? Oh, 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 ah. 
No, no, no. Eek, eek, it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling. Sometimes I've gotten mixed up between down and up with the W and S. Okay, well, I'm gonna ignite the engines in order to dump their fuel. And give us some hope here. But I doubt we, I don't think we have hope. <laughs> Not the main engines, of course. I guess we'll land over here if we can, uh, but we're losing way too much speed. Um, G for gear. If we can make it. So not quite right, but I think that was mainly because I'm just not good with this control scheme. And I'm not actually going to restore the save. I think we will relaunch, tweak some things, and try and and change out the the docking port for an actual decoupler. I can't really pitch up all the way yet. <laughs> uh, gotta try. Flare, 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 please. Ow! Ooh, ooh! Many pieces have happened. Oh yeah, I just. I swear the cockpit's still there somewhere. Maybe those are the Kerbal skidding across the ground. Anyway. Yeah. That was no good. So our stall speed is definitely over 80 meters per second there. Uh, if we want to actually land, we need to set down at basically shuttle speeds. But that was with the payload in the bay. Hopefully it'll be less without the payload in the bay. Alright, it wasn't hopeless though. Uh, I think uh, we can't revert. Um, shall we have two shuttles up there? No, um, we'll, we'll just, hopefully they'll, I don't think they're going to reincarnate, though. I guess we'll just, uh, we'll just deal with their demise. I think we'll just deal with their demise. We can't go to the vehicle assembly building directly? Fine. Okay, so first let's just check our one fuel line. It is connected. Second, I want to change the control surfaces. Okay, and then let's change out the docking port for a decoupler. Right, and we could probably carry more payload up, but we'll just try with this. Um, maybe I need to create a docking port arrangement in the front now. Otherwise, we're going to be planning everything without that extra mass in front. And sort of think... Oh, there's the radial attachment point. All right. Let me see if I can remember how to make the Das Valdez docking port arrangement. That arrangement had the Mark II docking port. But we don't have the Mark II docking port. So that part is actually gone. Well, there's a uh, fair approx uh, approximation. The nice thing about this was that, at least in the old version, uh, with the IVA view in this cabin, you could see out of this window into the bay. But uh, I don't know if the doors are going to close cleanly on that. And it's a little bit close to the front. Let's see. Uh, it's not closing cleanly on that. Okay, so we're going to have to shift it down. Uh, maybe we need something on top to help things out. Oh, there's no node on this side. We should flip it. Okay, uh, it's not clipping the doors now. Don't know if there's anything else I'd want on it. We'll just go with that sort of deal. And that also means that we have a uh, full complement of potential crew. In other words, the normal part uh, it only has four seats, which means it couldn't take a full shuttle crew. Now, with the Mark II cabin there, we can take a full crew. Uh, I believe that has four extra seats. Let me just make sure. Ah, uh, yes, it says four seat cabin there. Okay. So that's that, but I want RCS ports as well. If we've got the docking port, we should make it 
dockable. I mean, it's got the RCS stuff here, but I don't think it actually does RCS. Let me see. Maybe it already has the RCS up front. Oh, uh, it just says reaction wheel. It doesn't say anything about it having RCS ports. Uh, okay, I can still reach those. I was afraid I'll, I would never reach those again. I'm sure we can paint them to make sure the grayish portion can match, but I'm just going to hide them. I swear these should be a little bit lower, though, for balance, but we'll take it for now. That's good enough. I don't have to paint those. Okay, color. Uh, let's just go with black. And part. Okay, now they're... Oh, I'll paint those too. Okay, now they're sort of hidden. Okay, now the rear port arrangement. Uh, these little guys weren't tilted exactly the way I wanted. Oh, I did not want to reroute. I keep using three for... Uh, for rotation, and that ends up rerouting parts. I've done a lot of undoing, and in fact, the fuel line has de disconnected. So I have the struts. So this is by our standard procedures now. Start your, uh, check your struts, check your fuel lines. The way the camera shifts up to the root part is irritating sometimes. I, I don't know about the stripe at the top of the shuttle. Let me... Restore agency colors, but change the accent. And yeah, let's just get rid of that stripe. Now, if I could change the control surfaces and the leading edge to a different color and maybe paint the bottom black, that would be nice. But uh, for now, this is okay. Yeah, we don't need a stripe on top. Uh, if you could make the accent color the bottom of the bay, that would make more sense. Then we could paint it black. But a stripe on top. Yeah, I don't need that. Stripe on the fin is fine. Okay, now the rear RCS ports. I'm not going... Well, I've been making a replica. I guess we'll make them the way that the shuttle has them. I don't want to use an I-beam like that, though. <laughs> it looks too weird for me. But then the truss isn't great either. Oh gosh, the camera's gone into a position that I don't want. Okay. All right. Yeah, I don't know if the RCS is going to work on that, but we'll put it... RCS is still not going to be perfectly balanced or anything. Okay, that's good enough for a start. We fixed a few things. We've got a decoupler in the bay. The decoupler in the bay is obviously in the wrong place. Okay. I've got action group. If I can. How do I action group things? Action group manager. Action group the engines. This is the first time I'm action grouping something in KSP2. Okay, so... Okay, I guess it's custom 10 that I'm doing. Toggle engine. Huh? Okay, I don't know what that just... Toggle engine. Okay, now it says toggle engine and toggle gimbal. Hmm? Okay, toggle gimbal. You really have to press it to convince it, I suppose. Okay, it says three, but technically there were six things, but I'll leave it alone. And just in case we want to activate and deactivate the puffs, I'll have that. We can also automate the bay. Toggle carlo, uh, cargo bay. And we'll even have the decoupling. That might be dangerous though, because of staging, but... Uh, 
Okay, seven is decoupling. All right. Now we have a full featured shuttle. Double check fuel line. Fuel line still seems to be connected. Double check, check struts. Struts still seem to be connected. Change runway back to the launch pad. Oh, we have to recover, find recover, select. Okay. All right. Um, as far as input is concerned, maybe I should switch. Pitch forward and backward. See, that's that's the problem. Pitch up. Oh, do that way. And that's what I thought. I put pitch up as S and pitch down as W, but it seemed reversed. Maybe I need to invert these controls? But then if I invert the controls, the roll is going to be messed up. <laughs> the roll was fine. The pitch was the... We need to be able to invert just for one axis if that's going to be the case. I'll just deal with it. Yeah, okay. Alright. Let's launch. Okay. Well, this was the orientation that worked out for us before. So... Ignition? Surface velocity is 0.6 somehow. We're almost lined up with the platform on the engines. Okay, and launch. Oh. Okay. Alright, getting ready to actually do a whole lot of rolling. Maybe, yeah, I should just reverse it. It is the other way around here, too. So, here we go again. I didn't even ch pick my crew. Well, I've only got Valentina in there. Great. Somebody mentioned a unidirectional torque. That's not what I'm experiencing here. It just wiggles all over the place. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know what that problem is. That's a different problem. So pitching a little bit too quickly. Uh, I didn't do the launch as well as I did last time. Okay, booster set. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, I, I thought we had lost something, but I don't think I think it's okay. Still way shallow. Ah, uh, whoa, no, 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 no. Okay, more stable now. That lower atmosphere, though, you know. I'm trying to get back onto the 90 degree. Okay, nice and calm now. Okay, better disposal situation here. All right, now will be good for external tank disposal. Rolling around. I should paint the body flaps black. Okay, external tank separation. And RCS this way. Uh, no, this, uh, which way is it? <laughs> uh, it's just firing all of them. Okay. Okay. Switching off the main engines. Activating the next stage. But yeah, this is annoying. Alright. Oh! I let go of the payload. No, I didn't mean to do that yet. Oh, shoot. It's fine. We could have brought it up. Uh, I thought I said hold- oh, I say his control isn't actually on. Um, oops. I don't think it knows how to hold prograde here. Um, I guess I'm gonna have to help it. 
Oh, okay, 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 okay. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. What is the problem here? Um, my camera's like all over the place. Val, what are you doing? It's not really pointing at Prograde very quickly, is it? And my camera is like the wrong camera. I can't see it anymore. Oh, there it is. Okay, this is... the camera's messed up. Camera's messed up. It keeps going really far away and the control system's sort of messed up. Because it's just not liking prograde. Okay, so it doesn't understand the unique thruster arrangement of the space shuttle, I think. Is the problem. Which is going to be endless fun, I'm sure. Oh, so I think the OMS engines are messed up now. They were fine before, but they're really pushing us down for some reason. And yeah, the camera is weird. Okay, there, there's a lot of weird stuff going on right now. I don't feel safe anymore. Having such a wonderful time with my little shuttle. Now things have gone awry. Those OMS engines. Th 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 look how it shakes. It's weird. It's like glitching with those girders and the RCS back there. I think the OMS engines are like not liking that whole arrangement. They liked it better before. Uh, we'll wait until Apoapsis now. Uh, our periapsis is still low, though. Uh, Alright, we'll lift that, hopefully. Oh, using Ford RCS using H does not seem to work right now. I did put ones that were backward-facing. Look at the, ca the camera, it's like... Uh, yeah, uh, maybe a different view. Chase does not focus on it. Horizon, I don't know where it's gone. Body. I can't see the body. Oh, great. Alright, well, this is the only mode that I can actually see the shuttle in at all. Oh, whatever. We'll pass through and... Uh, look, it's drifted up. <laughs> oh, our apoapsis has just gone to 724 kilometers. Okay, I'm... I'm no, it's broken apart. <laughs> okay, okay. We've had glitchiness. We've had glitchiness. I'm stopping. Uh, stopping. Hey, uh, Valentina's glitching out. Look at her. Look at her. Oh my god, no. Putting RCS port- okay, I think clipping RCS ports into the body, bad idea. Uh, we will test- oh, I will test it some other time. I've had enough. This is enough. So yeah, I think clipping the RCS ports was a bad idea. And we're, we're going to revert so that Val- Val doesn't have to- yeah, let's confirm revert. Alright, yeah. Well, clipping things into other things is always an issue of sorts, but this is more of an issue than I thought it was going to be. Hmm... I don't want my RCF support sticking out. That's a shame. So, yeah. Well, you know, we, we got a good periapsis and the orbit location. The goal was to have a good deorbit location for the shuttle. We have that. We just need to refine it, and I need to work with the keyboard controls to be able to land a shuttle. Because for my entire life, I have been using a joystick to control planes. And we're talking about a substantial amount of time, folks. So anyway, uh, I'll leave it there for now. Uh, yes, I too have glitches. 
we will see what happens in future videos. But for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will see you next time.